Hey everybody, happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is the weekly show where we bring you the latest news from the world of television, plus talk about the week that was in TV. Joining us this afternoon is... Josh McCuga. Oh my God, there's so much to talk about today. I'm, I'm freaking out. We have too much. Go. Who's next? Also here is Emma Fife. That's right. I'm also here and ready to talk about all of the many, many things that happened in television over the course of the week and particularly the weekend. Who else? All right. Also here <laughs> is David Griffin. Because of time restrictions, Josh forbade me to talk about TV book talk. I can't talk about it. No, <laughs> no books. No books. No books. Just TV. Right. No Just books. TV. Uh, no, but seriously, we have a ton going on today. Uh, you guys tweeted at us all the up, a lot of the upfront Ooh. stuff, a lot of trailers, um, a, a lot of news, everything really in general. We are here live. Obviously, if you're watching us live, if you're not watching us live, you're still cool, I guess. <laughs> we still like um, you. We're gonna take live critic <laughs> questions at the end of the show. So hashtag Clatter TV Talk. Send them over there to Sneed to Freeze on the ones and twos, running it like an old episode of The Grind on MTV. She's doing it. She's got it. Uh, what's first, Sinead? All right, so George R. R. Martin, author of the books that Josh did not read, and the creator of Game of Thrones, took to his blog, yes, he is writing a blog and not more books, to tell fans that the HBO series in development are not spinoffs, but prequels, and will not, I repeat, not follow the stories of Dunk and Egg or Robert's Rebellion. He also talked about a fifth series in development. So, Josh, what's going on here? Yeah, um, okay, so, George. You seem like a really good guy. <laughs> I think we both uh, enjoy eating the same things. Obviously, I hope um, that uh, in the future, you stop writing blogs and finish the books <laughs> so that we can Whoa! know what happens. And this is coming from Josh McCuga, who no, here's does why. not read. I will so. not read the books, Robert, or George R. R. Martin. But what I'm <laughs> saying is, in these books, you're like, we'll tell you all about what happens in Robert's Rebellion. Fantastic. Amazing. Can't wait to not read about it, and why not do a show about it? Yeah. <laughs> without Sorry, the books, uh, yeah. the show doesn't happen, right? Uh, without the books, the show doesn't happen. But also, without the book, he's, oh, but in this fifth book, I'm going to write all about Robert's Rebellion. Freaking congratulations the 98 percent of the people that watch a stupid show don't read the books it's not a stupid show it's an amazing show I'm sorry <laughs> i'm yelling katie cody i'm hurting your ears i'm sure uh but th this news yeah a fifth series I'm, they're not pre they're not spin-offs they're like companion shows or what he's calling because he's written a bunch of novellas apparently yeah what do you guys think? I, you know, I mean, I think to me, this says that they're definitely making my Targaryen series that I pitched during yeah. our weekly run of TV talk. So I'm cool. I guess I'm cool with yeah. that. Spoken like a true blonde. He must have watched. He was yeah. like, oh, that's a good idea. So yeah, now, exactly. now there's a fifth series. Yeah. In yes. Right, right. Yeah. And it was specifically my idea. Right, right. So I should get paid for Story it. Story credit, Emma Fife. <laughs> this yeah. is a good time for them to tackle some some high fantasy. You know, not that this isn't, but yeah. it's more like Game of Thrones always been more grounded. You know, more you can you kind of relate to it. As grounded as you can be. As well as grounded as you can be in fantasy, but we see some elves and some some children of the forest and the first men and when dragons were running wild. I mean, I would love to see a story from that time period. They can do this with the spinoff because it's like an anthology. If it's a story, it's a companion story. Josh, <laughs> relax. It's just when a you, companion story. When you say dragons running wild, my immediate thought is like an island of dragons are all just like drinking, smoking, shooting. It's just like how to train your dragon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah, Game of Thrones style. Right. They're all just like, <laughs> cool. don't go to the island of dragons. Shit gets weird. Just like the boat and leftovers. But we'll get to that uh, oh a little bit later. The five series, the spinoff, non-spinoff, mm -hmm. non-prequel, sort of prequel, and taking place in different parts of Game of Thrones. Cool. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Okay. But if you don't give us some stuff that directly correlates to the show mm -hmm. or books, if you're talking about Robert's Rebellion, you're going to have the HBO rebellion of fans that are like, I don't care about this person. That's fair. Right? Yeah, yeah I think that's totally a fair assessment. Because as you say, it's like, Obviously, Game of Thrones is this very rich, thorough world with this crazy history. And I agree with you, David. Like, I, I would love to see some of the, like, really early stuff where this was more reminiscent of, like, a Lord of the Rings-style yeah. fantasy. However, I agree with you, Josh, that if it's not somehow directly correlating to the show, then I think it is going to estrange a lot of fans who are like, why should I care? Yeah. Like a little theory real quick, a little theory. Yeah. I think one reason why George is taking so long with this book, one, it's obviously very hard to write a thousand page book and to keep all those names and places and events uh, in your head. Also, remember, he started off in television with Beauty and the Beast. He was a TV writer. He loved writing TV. And one reason why he went to books is because his, his scripts were too big. They're too expensive. Now he has all this money, all this time and attention that HBO is giving to him. Like, hey, create stuff for us. Here's five shows. Create a sci-fi show for us. Create a detective show for us. He's been offered so many opportunities. He's like, crap, I love to write for television. Now I can do it. I yeah. think he's just probably conflicted. He's got a lot going on. I don't blame him. 
Yeah, apparently he likes to write for blogs. All I'm saying and is blogs. that. Which, uh, which is doesn't a, like to blog? a live journal, uh, if I am oh, not uh, mistaken. Yes, it, yes, his blog <laughs> is a live journal, I am oh pretty sure. God. At least it was for many, many what years. What is live journal? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I, he's my hero. I love him. Um, I, all I'm saying is that you created this beautiful, big, wonderful world, and then you're like, oh, and this series is about Eric. Eric works at a bar, and the bar is near Westeros, but Eric's life is tough. This fall on Fox. You're like, what the fuck is this show? Bar, it better not wait, be. the bar is near Westeros, yeah. so it's just like on an island yes. floating near yeah, Westeros? Okay. Like it's but you don't want to know what like, the normal everyday people are no. going through? No! No, <laughs> I want to see the madness. It's like, hey guys, I just bought a house. Come over for my house me. It's a Chuck E. Cheese down the street, but don't you'll never see the house. Don't worry about it. Hey, shit for brains. You wrote an amazing story. Give us everything else. Sorry, I yelled. I'm a little hyped up. It's a Monday. Okay, Sinead, what's next? The Judge Dread universe is about to expand with a TV show in development, tentatively titled Judge Dread Mega City One, a future set story following a team of cops who act as judge, jury, and executioner when dealing with the challenges of the 22nd century East Coast of the U.S., an overcrowded, crime ridden megalopolis. No actors have been reported just yet, but early development has begun on the show. David. Is this a good idea? It's a great idea. You like Dread? I like Dread. There's been, it's been around since 1977. That's 40 years, people, if you're slow <laughs> with math. That's as old as Star Wars. It's old. It's been around a long time. Yeah. And what's needed with this series is it has such a deep mythology to it because it's been comic books. Tons of comic books written about yeah. it. It's been two movies. 95, yeah. Such Stallone. Yeah. 2012, Carl Urban, which I think was the better adaptation. Absolutely. I think it captured more of what Dread is like. Had the helmet on the whole time. This is ripe. For the for the picking for a TV series, I think this is going to be good. Yeah, uh, I uh, I'm not particularly into Judge Dredd, but I have a couple friends that made really badass Judge Dredd cosplays, uh, and I'm very excited for. Now, if Judge Dredd was anime, would you be more into it? Uh, I don't think necessarily. <laughs> no, okay. I, I think if it was, there's a greater chance I might have read the source material. Got it. Mm, it like it. I would have read the manga if it was a Judge Dredd manga. See, probably. I thought <laughs> the, the thing about Judge Dredd is that obviously the Sylvester Stallone one was. I in am the law. Yeah. <laughs> I am the law. You get. Uh, <laughs> did you not like my Sylvester Stallone? There, uh, I, that was highly insulting to <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. I mean, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. And Sylvester, come on out. He's my good buddy here on Go Out of TV time. Um, no, uh, I, the, uh, in that 95 time period, you had those campy uh, action films like that, like uh, 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 Demolition Man. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And Judge Dredd. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they were very well lit and yeah. everything was bright. And look mm -hmm. at me, I'm a well dressed cop. Then Carl Urban comes along yeah. in 2012. And that almost had like a raid feeling. Doesn't even to show it. his face. Nothing. Half his face. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, he, you know, it, it has like a raid feeling, mm -hmm. a raid, you know, raid one. And it was such a gritty thing that I hope that this series has that kind of feel to it. That yeah. we get, and we get it somewhere that allows it to do well, that. Well, I agree. I mean, I think obviously for me, this feels like it should be a Netflix kind of thing because mm -hmm. even though it's not Marvel, it feels sort of in line with the kind of stuff that Marvel's doing with their Netflix shows. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of potential here. And it's grit. It's not superhero. Yeah, you know, yeah. Dread, yeah. Dread isn't a... Just a man doing his job. Yeah. yeah. It's Working been around since 1977. 1977. Mm -hmm. That's like Just even made. before Josh was born. That is older than Josh. Oh. Poor Josh. <laughs> <laughs> You can leave! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but yeah, it was well before I was born. <clears throat> well. <laughs> well. A few, few years. <laughs> a few years. <laughs> well, perhaps in my old age, I will tell you of the times of the 80s. There, <laughs> I just like it because we're exactly a decade apart. Know, like fantastic. to the month, right? Yeah. We're in January too. Yep. It just makes me very happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else makes me happy? Us moving on to Superhero Ronda. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got, <laughs> I was going to write these out, but we have so much to talk about. Of course. Uh, you want to enter what, what we're talking about first? Sure. So yeah. this Deadpool animated series at FX from our king and savior and <sighs> the light of our lives, Donald Glover. <laughs> yes. And his brother, Stephen Glover, who we also love. Yeah. He seems yeah. like an awesome dude. He worked with him on Atlanta. I Listen, if they do this like a super R-rated archer. If they do this like almost late yeah. at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally on board. Oh, I'm hundred so percent. And yes. I mean, like. Donald Glover is such a big, like he's very outspoken about what a big comic book fan he is. Mm -hmm. Like I, Donald Glover is going to do this 
justice is how mm -hmm. I feel. And it will be so nice to see a really good animated series within the Marvel universe because, yeah, you know, right. DC has always had fantastic animated shows. Marvel, the X-Men uh, animated series from 93 uh, is fantastic uh, in, its, in its very 90s kind of way. And I loved X-Men Evolution as well. Mm -hmm. But like since then, and maybe it's because it's it's really targeted at a young age demographic, I haven't really connected with the Marvel animated series so much. But So this Deadpool news is really, really exciting. Yeah, I think what's cool about this, and obviously Deadpool last year was the breakout hit of the year uh, for a lot of people. And, and definitely for me and a lot of our friends, it shocked the world kind of a thing. Um, but with Deadpool coming in, there's so much more in this like Deadpool world that I would love mm, to see. Yeah. So the fact that we are getting this now and that a mind like Donald Glover, because there are points when he first started pitching Atlanta, he, he, there are parts of Atlanta that are supernatural. It's a weird mm. supernatural, like the invisible car that comes through yes. and you know, the, the pinching itself, the tongue in cheek kind of stuff. And you can't pick a better dude to mm. do something like this. If he doesn't in Atlanta or if he, you know, we get a world. Yeah. Yeah. We get uh -huh. we get a world where mm -hmm. Deadpool is, mm -hmm. and with animated, which I know y you'll agree with me, there's so much more that yes. you can do with it. There's this giant world that you can create. Well, and on top of that, so much of the character of Deadpool already relies on those kind of visual gags yes. that are very much yeah. established in like the early Warner Brothers cartoons. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like. In, and as you say, Josh, like in an animated universe, like they have the ability to go totally over the top with those things, which is perfectly appropriate for Deadpool. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we, obviously, you get a, like a Rick and Morty, very adult yes. cartoon, mm -hmm. very adult animated show. I refrain from using the word cartoon because I know people have yelled at me. <laughs> uh, you get a uh, family guy. You have Simpsons that are very adult. This could have the uh, Archer, a very adult animated series. But again, there's like so much more that you can do with death and murder and his, the hystericals well, of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this you, we're talking about it being on FXX. Yeah. 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 So, but like, I'm I'm confused because I always feel like that's the same channel. Like, uh, is, are they actually two separate channels? Two separate channels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two separate channels mm -hmm. under the same banner. Yeah. 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 Why do I feel like it all plays on my, the same channel in my house? Well, it probably picks it up on maybe, your DVR. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also, too, what's cool is that because it's animated, they don't have to like adhere to what the movies are doing. They kind of do whatever they want. You just think about how bloody the itchy and scratchy cartoons were on The Simpsons. Oh, oh, That's yeah. not even TVMA. Yeah. I know. So they can go really far out with animation. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. South Park, they can go all out with this. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, what's next, Sinead? The Gifted trailer <laughs> dropped. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have... We've been, we had like a little teaser, right, on Twitter that was sort of like 20 seconds long almost. This trailer was good. Yeah. It was dark. Yeah. It was just kind of like shots. Like there wasn't, mm -hmm. I didn't really get what it, it are they, they're brother and sister. Sure. I'm yeah. sure there's like some sort of X-Men thing in there. Well, and then like they, had, they had their dad and, right. and then their dad works for, he works with people that like lock mutants up, it sounds right. like, mm -hmm. but then one so of his kids is a mutant, so now he's mom. conflicted. Yeah, he's conflicted about it. It was definitely yeah. all over the place. Yeah, I, I, Seemed I, entertaining. Uh, yep. Yeah, I agree. It, it, I I think you nailed it, Josh, saying that like it was just a bunch of scenes. Like I didn't quite get what the story was, yeah. aside from you have this brother and sister. Both of them seem to have inherited some sort of genetic mutation that gives them powers, and that's really in conflict with their dad's job. Like that's that's all I. It se and got it seems like it. he can bend metal, and she has telepathy or telekinesis. Y yes, but she almost looks like almost looks like um from Fantastic Four. She can like create like a shield. Oh Almost. yeah, she's like she's kind of like doing this. There was this bubble that went over her yeah. like this. And right. I like this as one. I, oh, and wait. I did like that mm. aspect of it because I've always been of the opinion that like Sue Storm's powers are actually awesome, and yeah. they don't portray them certainly not in the film super well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like the power of force fields is actually awesome. Also, Q yeah. was they, they mentioned the Brotherhood. Um, it's more like the villain side of things, and they also mentioned the X Men. Like, hey, maybe the Brotherhood and the X Men are all gone. So yeah. They seem like they're alone right now, so they do acknowledge the you know the X Men a reconnection universe. of the universe, sort of mm -hmm. like a Logan kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that seems to be where the X Men universe is going, of like a reconnection For to sure. a gone era. Yeah, I mean, it felt like this probably could take place in your sort of post Logan mm -hmm. yeah. world. And we we would be uh, wrong to, if we w would not mention the Fox series. Mutant X from the 90s, <laughs> which was their first tra travail into the X-Men universe on Fox, uh, did not do well. It was no. uh, not well received. But this looks like it. it is, I, I, listen, again, you can't really tell a lot from the trailer. Yeah. But it is Fox. Which is a shame, because it is a very long trailer. I know. <laughs> almost three minutes, yeah. yeah. Almost three minutes so uh, we'll see. 
this again, I'm very kind of like the girl with the green hands looks like she's got a power. They've all got a power, but we don't know much about a story, which is I would I would like to get from a trailer more so than action scenes. Give me a little bit of story. So yeah, right. I'm a little more involved. It's kind of like, oh, here are the highlights of the sports game. Shot, shot. They don't show the goals, and then you leave. Right, right. and they yeah. don't know who won. Like, right. you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's and, so, oh, sorry. No, no. I was just gonna say, like, they set up the story. The only plot in the story is that the kids being bullied, and at the same time, their dad's against mutants. Yeah. But it's like, have we heard even, that before? You don't even exactly. You don't even yeah. have to set that up. Like, yeah. Mm. The, if they would have played more into the being bullied thing, maybe and gone that way, but like. The whole dad, like, that's not... And the mom's like, well, why didn't you tell us? Well, it's like, duh. In yeah. the, even in the Legion yeah. trailer, they're like, this, per, this he could be the most powerful mutant in the world. And that kind of sells the show. Because we don't know why. Mm -hmm. They don't say anything about powers or where they are or anything like this kind of a thing. Which is why it kind of sells itself a little short, to be right. honest with you. Yeah. But it's also hard, too. Don't forget, like, we're talking about network television. So, yeah. you know, you know, ABC, NBC, Fox. They developed so many shows during pilot season that it's hard to tell what they're really behind. It seems like this is one of those shows they are going to be behind because it is a Marvel production. But unlike we go to HBO, you have maybe three shows at three. one time. Yeah. You have a drama and you have two comedies. You have, like, Game of Thrones, V, Silicon Valley. So there's a lot of emphasis on one big show at a time. Yep. There's like 15 new shows coming out on these networks, so it's like, mm -hmm. we'll see if they're actually really behind. I hope it's good. Right. I hope it embraces what Hero Season 1 did so yeah. well. Then it could be good if it's like Hero Season 1. 100%. Mm -hmm. All right, what's next, Shane? Krypton and Black Lightning <clears throat> have both been greenlit to series. Yeah. Okay, so we kind of all predicted that this uh, <laughs> would happen. Um, I... And I, I would be, I would be shocked if Black Lightning wasn't involved in the Flaro universe. Of course, the Flaro, the Flaro. I love that. The Flooper Girl. <laughs> um, uh, the he, so that's cool. Krypton, we all like the trailer. It all yeah. seemed pretty good. It was leaked. Yeah. Yes, they took it out. It's, it's, it's gone. It's gone yeah. now. Yeah. But it, I, again, I don't think either. It, Either one of these announcements is shocking to me. No, no, I, yeah, I'm not surprised at all. I think I actually already thought that Black Lightning had been picked up for yeah. series. So yeah, I actually 100. percent Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, well, I think we all did. And yeah. and again, I, and I said this when we looked at the Krypton trailer was like, you know, my initial reaction here in Krypton, I'm like, okay, do we really need that? But then seeing it and seeing that it's on sci-fi, I'm like, actually, could be I'm fun. Kind of, yeah, mm -hmm. this could be really yeah, fun. Yeah. And I'm excited to see Black Lightning because we're gonna have a, a middle-aged guy who has family and he has kids and he has to be a superhero, but he's going to come home and be a dad, too. Mm -hmm. That's going to be interesting to see. We don't get to see that dynamic because everybody's so young in the CW universe. It'll be nice to see an older gentleman. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, okay, let's get into our favorite part of the show, Sinead. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's right. And it got renewed. Got renewed. We're here. Thank God. Man, they kept us there at the 25th hour, didn't they? What the hell? Yeah, I know. It was a little scary to me. Yeah. Um, but I think that it needed a little bit of time. for. Th I'm happy they gave it a little bit of time because mm -hmm. if they would have based, you know, renewing or canceling the show on just a couple months ago, I yeah. think it would we would have had a different outcome. For sure. But this last this last half of this past season has been one of my favorite. Oh, it's fantastic. so unbelievably entertaining. Yeah. And I'm so happy that it's getting renewed because it just shows that a little bit of Ghost Rider will just really make a series. I was talking to my buddy who uh, has been, he's written some stuff for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff and we were talking about it. And he said when they came into the writer's room for this season that they wanted to have mini movies. And that's basically what we've gotten, yep. right? We had the Ghost Rider mini movie that was eight episodes. We had the the LMD mini movie, which is probably my least favorite mini movie yeah, of the season, that, just based on robots. That, yeah, but we needed all, I was just thinking about this last to night. To get to. We needed all of that for this to make sense, but yes. even after all of this, there are so many things from LMD that still don't actually make sense in my right, head. Right, agreed. I was yeah. like, we didn't have to spend that much time. If they keep this formula going and this mini movie thing, yes. they, they can be really successful. I 100% agree. And, and we are getting Ghost Rider back tomorrow, which is really exciting. I know, for the finale. And yeah. his, his entrance into the show at the end was was great. What I, what I My favorite... So obviously the battles and getting it and, and um, you know, Max staying back on the you planet. put a spoiler alert up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, put a spoiler alert. Okay. My favorite part of the episode mm -hmm. was when Ada is rejected by Leopold. And I'm saying to myself in my head, if you're a human being, and you've been a robot all this time, and you're a human being, and you can finally feel empathy, sympathy, right. emotions, heartbreak, when she gets rejected, the feeling of rejection. Do you remember when you were like 13 or 14? And you get broken up with, and you get this that sick feeling in the pit of your stomach, and yes. you're going to throw up immediately? But now that you're an adult, she's a person, and she's obviously not chemically balanced, and she freaks out. I'm like, yes, that's what happened when every human emotion is thrown to you at one time because yeah. you are a new human being. Right. And she goes absolutely insane. And 
I'm watching it, and Amanda's in the background. She, she's like, why is she going so mad? I was like, ah, she's never been broken up with before, and she's 30, so right. she's kind of, like, losing her mind. <laughs> yeah. And, she, and you could see, like, I had a girl scream at me and, and before, and I was like, oh, God, dude, just run. Just get the hell out of here. <laughs> Nothing good can happen here. This yeah. is a total, yeah, total yeah, nightmare. Yeah. It was so well done. That girl, the, the actress that plays Ada, encompassed that entire feeling of rejection. A, a man has rejected me that I was in love with and just insanity. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And I feel like she's come such a long way from the LMD days. I know. She was just this little, oh, yeah, Meta. Right. And now <laughs> she's now she's awesome. She's crazy. But I'm like, I'm like just so stoked in where this entire show I know. is. All those Russian dudes I in the submarine. I still really uh, miss Ward, though. I know. I really do. Everybody was asking us, do you think that with that new machine that they're going to build new humans, they're not going to bring Ward back. They're not going to. I, don't I think know. the only thing that they're worried about is Mac. It's a yeah. shame. And like, what about Trip? Like, too, like, we'd we, love have, we have to go get Mac, right? I know. We know if that's going to happen at some point. Yeah. I have a feeling it's probably going to happen in the season finale, and it's probably going to be heartbreaking because I, like, so I said my DVR cut off, but I know Yo Yo went in after him. Yep. My DVR cut off with literally like 45 seconds left to go, and it was <laughs> the most depressing. I didn't see the end teaser when Ghost Rider yes. showed up. But um, I know she's going to go in after him, so it's like, is he, I feel like she's probably going to get you know him to remember. You know where she is when she's in there. When she goes in after him, she's pinned to a table, and she's like, she's in an... It, 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 she's in, Pre-existing, right? Well, yeah, because she's a, an inhuman. Right, yeah. right. So I bet you anything that he's going to have to like save her and that they're going to end... And she is going to help him remember and it's going to come down to do I choose my actual real life, life. or can I have this other life because this or is pretty damn good too. they are going to start destroying the framework. Somehow from the outside they're going to start destroying the framework and like it's going to start tumbling down pixel style. That's what I think. But Crazy. Awesome. Can't Crazy wait for stuff. the season finale. We'll talk about it next. Flash. I'm going to let you guys talk. I, I, I actually sort... There were things that I liked about this episode okay. of Flash. Okay. And the main thing that I liked was, first of all, uh, Barry, with no memories, yes. uh, was delightful. He was... <laughs> yeah, he was like a charming I mean? dude. Yeah, he yes. was like a nice, charming dude. He was more like, you know, the character we came to like in the early seasons of this yeah, show. Was... Um, and <laughs> I liked how Iris was really hesitant to, like, let him get his memories back. Like, right? I, that, to me, felt so real because she was able to kind of protect him. I mean, she mm. she was doctoring his memories to be like, yeah, your life is really great, but like really it's not. And no. it just and it 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 kind of brought up that idea of like how our memories are what we make them and cuz I mean the big question of this episode was like if you could like basically undo all of the the pains and wrongdoings of your past, but you would literally have no memory of anything. Mm -hmm would you do it? Mm -hmm. And so obviously like this is really good for Barry as a person, but it's not so good for him as the flash. Right. Yeah. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Pixar's fantastic movie inside out, <clears throat> but it kind of reminds me of inside out. So the whole thing of the premise of inside out in the end is that look, your bad memories and your good memories, they kind of mix together to form, you know, what your life is. That's yeah. what this episode was about. And it was nice. It was nice to see killer frost working yeah, with the team again. You yeah. know, that, that was nice interaction. We're in her, fancy outfit. I don't know where she gets that, but it's great. I don't know. And I'm like, what, she stops at what, is, shops. Yeah, what is like Savitar? What has he promised her that she's like helping him out? You know what I mean? That's she's, my business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, my business. I mean, cause I, I like that she's kind of on her own side. Cause obviously right. we do see her help out in this episode. She is brilliant, like smart, intelligently speaking. So she's the one who actually like figures out how to get Barry to get his mm -hmm. memories back. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I'm curious about like what's going on there. The whole time remnants thing and the yeah, it's just getting really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of episodes. I, I we're, would we're, like we're, them to yeah. work out exactly how time travel works. Yes. In this world, because it's a it's a it's little all over the place, hazy. Emma. It's a yeah, little all yeah. over. The place. Yeah, time travel stuff. It's tough. Yeah, to <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on to Arrow. Uh, this episode kind of annoyed me just a little bit with like the dad thing. Honor thy father. Yeah, thy uh, yeah I mean that was the title mm -hmm. of the episode. And yeah. It was very, very anticlimactic with him, you know, capturing and putting Chase. We knew Agent bars. Chase had ulterior motives. We knew yes. he was be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I give up. You're right, Barry. Yeah. You're right. Uh, sorry, Oliver. Ollie. I give yeah. up. This Barry. is how we're gonna do it. And then obviously, <laughs> oh, he's gonna be pulling strings right. from inside mm -hmm. the cage. Uh, we saw in the, in the trailer for next week. So I thought that this episode was sort of. It, again, 
you don't get this if you have 13 episodes on True. Yeah. But we do have Dolph Lundgren coming yeah. back. We do. Yeah. That was, that that was, I nice. was excited that about. Excited about yeah. I, I, the, on the island. Uh, on the island, yeah. 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 The one thing I will say is that, because obviously like he's been in the black costume for so long now, and then he finally like puts the green, mm -hmm. you know, green arrow costume back you on. So yeah, and I and I actually liked that that was not like super overblown. Right. It felt like Okay, cool. We're just we're we're ready to do this now. It mm -hmm. wasn't a big moment of like, ooh, now he's the Green Arrow again. You know what, to be honest with you, when we were watching the episodes when he wasn't the Green Arrow, I got really confused. I was like, all right, so which one is he now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the one yeah. guy wears a mask. The other guy wears it. Who's and the other guys wearing masks? I don't know. And somebody brought something up to me. Where is Vigilante? The guy with the the Oakley goggles? He's just gone. He's gone for a while. Or he's taking a little yeah, taking a little break. We don't know. A little break, yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah, well, it, yeah, I, I miss Thea as being part of the team. I, I did, know Oliver wanted, yeah. hey, for old time's sake, why don't you come out? with? And she's like, no, I'm, I can't do that right now. But right. I wish she was back. I do. I, I am a big Thea fan, mm -hmm. yeah. even though she's, you know, 5'1", 100 pounds. Uh, she, and, her, and stunt like, her stunt double is great. Her stunt double is great. Her stunt double is great. Yeah. Double's great. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, again, I think that where we've been talking about is we're going to end the flashbacks on Lian Yu. Uh, mm -hmm. And Deathstroke's got to come in here somewhere. We've even teased with him. He's, he's got to be coming in here somewhere. Very, again, a very setup y episode mm -hmm. for the thing. Yes. All right, let's end with some Supergirl. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, right now with Supergirl. That's the kid, by the way, from This Is Us. That, oh, uh, yeah. That's young Randall. Okay, I, I got a couple things I got to say about this episode. Okay. I got a few things. Go. So they try to David's pull in this like civil <laughs> rights. Can we get a slow <laughs> pan yeah, in just, on David? Okay, Can so we there's just um, <laughs> no, we don't have a few things I have to say. A few things I have to say. They try to pull in this whole like civil rights thing, like, hey, you can identify with this kid because he's black. I'm like, yeah. he's an alien. Yeah. He's an alien. He's not black. I mean, I know he looks like a black kid, but he's alien. He's not from this planet. So how do we yes. know that that planet is broken down? They could all be black people in that planet. There might be one planet just full of black people. He's not black. <laughs> he's an alien. It was frustrating me. I was that's, like, why are you pulling the civil rights stuff in here? He's, so he's, he's an alien. Sorry. I'm sorry. Never really thought I like it, David. I'm I, so I, I did. Accurate. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm with I love you. it. But the kid's I like, cute. I love the kid. He's yeah. cute. I like, kid. See, I like seeing David Griffin get like worked up about something. He's usually Ooh. pretty like even keeled. Sorry. But no, that was great. I, I'm you know, I'm basically here for Terry Hatcher at this point. <laughs> yeah, I feel we all like are. like she's still yeah. crushing it. Yeah. I like the story that's happening with her and Lena Luther because obviously like Lena never had a positive mother figure. And like even though Terry Hatcher is manipulating her. She burned uh, again, yep, Lena. Burned yep, again. Yep. Uh, and and it's just amazing to see like Terry Hatcher like basically she's like the greatest villain that's what? happened to the show. Like she's super in charge of everything and like again like lies to Monel about what mm -hmm. happened to his dad because obviously we all saw on the show she straight up murdered him. Yeah, Kevin oh, yeah. Sorbo and, got this, that, the old yep. angry wife Shank. Yeah, and she's like, yeah, your father killed himself, and we're yeah. all, ah, oh, come on. Yeah. I'm like yeah, yep. she's great. Then the end's like, welcome to New Dax. Yeah. Like, Whoa. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's good. It's New York. Um, <laughs> the uh, the one thing I will say is that both Lena Luthor's mothers in this uh, mm -hmm. mother figure, mother figures, and actual yeah. mother, uh, were both in Seinfeld. Uh, one oh, played yeah. the, the braless wonder, Sue Ellen Mischke, and the other one played the real and the fantastic. Yeah. Uh, both episodes focused around boobs. So mm -hmm. fantastic for both actresses and fans of Seinfeld. <laughs> All right, let's move over to everybody's favorite show and the most orgy-filled episode of television we've seen this year. Yeah, the this year. May, this... may, may I read something? Yes. It'll only take about 20 seconds here. This is, this is, yeah, I'm paraphrasing. Go, go, go. So, hidden in his... No, this is a French translation of what was said. This is, this is part of it. Not the whole thing. It's not the whole sure. thing. Hidden in his nest, a volcano in the sea. Thank you, God, for technology. In our pride, we made the weapon to end all weapons, a nuclear bomb. Now this terrible power may be our salvation. If the explosion can break the brittle shell and melt the demon inside, God, let this missile fly straight, straight and true. Let it find the nest in the volcano and let the egg there be unhatched so that this unborn beast may be destroyed before it wakes and rises to destroy the world. That is just an excerpt from uh, what the uh, French gentleman, I'm guessing that Marine officer, yes. naval officer, was saying in the beginning of the episode. There's more to it, but that's part of it. Crazy stuff. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy And he, he basically blew up an entire island, right? Yeah, he was psycho. Saying? Yeah. He, and he's also very flexible. Yes. He was doing some stretches very in the morning. Very flexible. Very flexible. I got to say, <laughs> uh, uh, last night of television, we saw a lot of dongers in there. That was, oh, uh, that was yeah. I Love Dick at its finest. It, yeah, it really was. It was just like, it was just like, well, all around. Well, at least on like um, leftovers, it's a little more... 
graceful. <laughs> yeah. On American Gods, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Every wiener on American Gods is like, look at me. <laughs> See, I, I, I got to say something else real quick. I got a question. So whenever they right show, I, I, there's always seems right. to, there always seems to be this little bit of a tension whenever they show penises on television. When they show yeah. boobs, like, eh, it's boobs. When they show some penis, everybody gets all up in arms about it. Yeah, I know. It's like, this is the most controversial gay sex scene we've ever seen. I'm like, yeah. But I don't know if it's controversial. Yeah. I just, I, I'm, I'm with Sinead. Like, it's too yeah, much. It just, I don't know. You don't think you need to see the dongers to make it. It's like almost like for like shock value. Yeah, it 100% yeah. is. I think that's I think that's what it is. Is that like it's hard to <laughs> draw the line. Like with with boobs at this point, it's like yeah. In and in some <laughs> cases, like for no, like for me, like I for example on this last episode of Handmaid's Tale, like I was like oh thank God when like boobs were actually seen because suddenly sex was fun again. Uh, mm. But like. I agree, like with dicks. Wait, we saw boobs in this week's Handmaid's Tale? Yeah. I'm back on the show. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Handmaid's Tale is back. <laughs> Woo! Uh, but yeah, I, I, but I agree. It, it's like, it does feel like whenever there's a dick, like, I, I don't know. It, uh, does, no, it listen, always feels like a shotgun. I, 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 I agreed. It's, it's because <laughs> the female body is gorgeous in every single way <laughs> and thus should be shown right. in its entirety. The male... Genitalia and the and the and the, the dick there doesn't need to be shown. Show some show no. the Jax Teller back muscles and the pecs. Yeah, and the let's abs. not sugarcoat it, okay? It's yeah. a scary looking thing, yeah. and especially when it's being 100%. thrown on the screen. Yes, and I mean like for leftovers last night, I felt like that was all of the orgy stuff. It yeah. made sense. It kind of it did. It was actually a very crazy beautiful thing that yes. they had put Lori Matt. And I keep wanting to call the other guy, no, John, Lori, John, John. Lori, Matt, John, and the son right. on this boat, right, with a real life mission in their head. Right. But the, everything around them was a big giant. Sodom and Gomorrah kind of. Right. Thing. And it was like he, he perfectly captured it when, okay, I was just making sure. Yeah. He perfectly captured it when he accidentally spoke his name and they're about to like make him do weird things to the Frasier. fake animatronic yeah. Frasier <laughs> yeah. lion. And he's like, what is wrong with all of you? Like, all you guys are cared about is effing each other when there's, like, real life going on. Right. And that, to me, like, it all made sense. Yes. It actually was... I felt frustrated for him, too, because yeah. he's literally like, somebody just fell overboard, and the world is ending in four days, At and he sees it. the yeah. world yeah. is going crazy. Everyone's going psycho, and here you guys are, like, having a grand old time. Right. Trying the old sex cruise. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. The, so it all made sense. But at the same time, and I agree with you about it, like, making sense, and at, and at the same time, it's like you had all of those people, and the reason that they were having this crazy orgy is because, like, this is what they're kind of choosing to latch exactly. their faith onto. Yeah. With the end of the world the sex lion. being imminent, yeah, is yes. is basically this this they worship this lion god, All right. so to speak. So, right. I, I, David, as a as a man of the, of faith and uh, oh, that man. was in the seminary, what like religious undertones were there at the end of the guy that was God and then a lion attacking him? Um, well, I mean, I, I can't remember exactly, but I believe he was was he reading Daniel? He was reading okay. some book in the mm. Old Testament, so I think it was alluding to the lion and yeah, yeah, yeah. the story there, I assume. I mean, there's so much. I mean, Lindelof loves playing with theology. I mean, yeah. obviously many fans yeah. out there are lost fans. Yeah. You'll know he loves playing with theology, so of course there's always going to be religious overtones, but he's not just using Christian overtones. He's using a lot of other religions, too, which is okay. cool. He's kind of combining them, yeah. But yeah. I assume it has to do with Daniel. Yeah, yeah I assume. And do we think that guy's dead? Because that's the guy that we've seen him before. <clears throat> he was in Kevin's the vision. The guy who plays God? Yeah. Well, he got that line messed him up. He, he's dead. That line, he's right. dead. But I, he's I died so. before. I, that's true. Yes, that was that's yeah, true. that was exactly what it was. Was that he was that's supposed right. to have died in a climbing accident, that's right. and his friend but literally we, dragged his corpse into a cave, and then he was sitting outside the next day when the like people came back to get it to bury him, and he's like, "What he up? Alive, I yeah. am." God. All right. Well, then if that's the case, if he really is like another version of Kevin, and he came back to life or whatever, even though he had like a different story, he's got a right? Beard. Mm -hmm. He said mm -hmm. that that was, didn't he say like that was Jesus? Like that was Jesus who died, yeah. I, right? I'm God. Mm -hmm. So he's a little, you know, whatever. But if he really is like Kevin, then maybe he isn't dead. And you may be right. Yeah. This show, I have no idea what's going on. I was getting a little annoyed with Matt this week. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, I understood where he was coming from there, especially... That's just good acting. You know, it's great acting. It I mean, you're supposed to. You're, you're yeah. absolutely supposed to be annoyed with him. But the fact that he was just, like, so dismissive of Nora, who is his sister, he's yeah. like, I don't... He's right. like, I don't care. Like, whatever. And then... Uh, and the way he was treating Lori also because, like, she's... 
not like a woman of faith, but like it. But again, yeah. you were supposed to hate him, right? Yeah. He was like almost like looking down on her, yeah. Like, and it was just kind of like, ugh, like we get it. Yeah. Um, I will say though, the thing that I really appreciate about the leftovers this season is when they do these one-off episodes. I feel like they're doing it a hell of a lot better this season than they've done it in the past, mm -hmm. especially last season, because I liked last season, but there were a couple of episodes where I was like, great, we didn't see any of our main characters. Yeah. There's a huge thing happening right now in Australia, so that last night could have really annoyed me, knowing we only have a few episodes but left. it felt like a ticking clock. Yeah, right. and, and I think it that's all why. is pushing the plot forward, yeah. and I feel like they they have nailed it this season mm. in terms of like making us always feel like we're invested in the story. You know what's interesting, though, in this, just to because you asked me a theological question, what's crazy is that in the Bible, Daniel is facing the lion, and in this case, he's the Matt has tied God up to a chair, and God is in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a reversal of roles. It's kind of interesting. I don't know what Damon's playing at, but it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, and the and the and the people at the end there, the guy was like, "Don't get off the ship," right? Because they were releasing. Then the he lion. gets bit by the lion. I know. Yeah, it's so, crazy. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to American Gods on Stars. Uh, again, a show that got picked up for another season, season two. We're going to see of American Gods, Yay. and thank goodness because we are four, three episodes in. And again, I, I this is one of the shows that I love watching, and I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Well, I've, I mean, because uh, at this point, it, they really are. You don't you don't know what anybody's angle is, no. and that's the way it's supposed to be. It's like this discovery okay. process that's currently happening. I mean, that that it's that's very similar to how it was in the book. Like okay. I remember reading the book, and I'm like, what's What's happening here? Yeah. I like it, but I'm not sure what's going on. I love uh, the the Schreiber that plays the leprechaun. Leprechaun oh, yes. is awesome. I'm glad that he's a main character and that he's going to be playing a role in this whole. Like how cool comic book is. Like he's angry, but he's like, okay, my coin's back in Indiana. I'm cool. going to Indiana. I'm going to go get it. Yeah. 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 I'll see you guys in and Wisconsin. Then when, yeah. in, in the scene <laughs> where he was just like digging up the grave, I was like, <laughs> yeah. okay, I guess we're, uh, we're just diving right into this. Right in. It's, <laughs> it's, he, the thing is, too, and we were talking about the, the orgy on the boat, the orgy with the two dudes. I'm guessing is some sort of it was like a reconnection of ancient Egyptian gods. Is that what that uh, is? Indian, but Indian. yeah, okay. yeah. He, one guy was a jinn, a yeah. genie, but you know he's like, I don't grant wishes. Yeah, right. You know? But the guy seems like he has a better life now. He seems like he's happy, he's confident. He can drive a cab now. Yeah, he's yeah. doing okay. That's not maybe the best wish, but he's he's happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. happy. It had uh, it definitely was a very interesting scene. I, again, I thought that people were tuning like this sex scene was crazy. We didn't see didn't, like actual penetration. Yeah, I didn't think. Yeah. I, I thought. I really liked it. I I didn't think it was anything crazy. Go on, Emma. Yeah, no, it was, I I thought it was done really tastefully. No, I enjoyed I agree. it. I agree. I agree. I mean, besides the, the <laughs> gratuitous dongers in there, right? Um, it's again, true. There was there was just like one moment of like giant dick. Geez, and then that guy's got just, a he's uh, got something impressive and then they under just there. Got into the sweet sweet <laughs> love making. Yeah, agreed. Um, and, and Everybody needs loving. Everybody yes. needs some loving. Uh, I, thought, <laughs> I thought that the end of. Um, the the second checkers game was almost a little anticlimactic. Uh, yeah, and at the same time, I knew he was going to win. You knew he was going to win, right? Yeah. But at I, the same time, it illustrated a really important point that, like, the problem with the old gods is that they don't they don't evolve. Mm -hmm. so, so Chernobog was playing literally the exact game of checkers that he had played before. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So Shadow already knew what he was going to do, and so Shadow was testing the theory of like, are you just going to do what you did before? Mm -hmm. And he figures out. That that is exactly yeah. what's happening. So he's able to beat it. Now he and has I a literal moon right. in his pocket. He yes. has, uh, I will yeah. be. I will be Wisconsin. Yes. It's good. Yeah, it's, it's good. good. Uh, it's good. I it's loved. Good. I loved uh, the youngest uh, of the Zoria sisters. So, the girl holy on the roof. Jesus! I was <laughs> fainted. Great. She is so hot. Oh my god. <laughs> She's up on the roof. Like, look at the stars. I'm like, I'm having trouble looking uh, anywhere else. <laughs> and my god, is she, wait, you've been on the roof the whole time? Like, don't go in my sister's room. Yeah, no shit. Could you fall in love with this girl? Oh yeah. my god. Um, yeah, she's a she's a Polish actress. I did my research on. Uh... What's crazy is just how slow. It's not. I, mean, I say slow. I mean slow in a good way or deliberately paced. The show is going. We haven't seen Crispin Glover's character. No. Yet. And Crispin Glover is one of the lead actors. He's in the credits all the time. Oh, we yeah. haven't yeah. seen him yet. They're still just slowly rolling the gods. And a lot of gods we've only seen once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Julian Anderson's character is media. Yeah. Only seen her once. Yep. Only seen Technology Boy once. Mm -hmm. Only seen uh, Anansi in yeah. the intro and also mm -hmm. this week Anubis, which yeah. I loved. That was a great intro. I loved really that cool. intro and I loved that idea too where basically like you know the woman this dies this isn't queens this and, isn't queens yeah no. exactly and she's like she's like but this is a muslim household why is anubis coming to mm -hmm. escort me and he's like well 
the Egyptian mythology is what you really believe in. Right. right. So I, I, that's, to me, one of the coolest aspects of American Gods. And I loved, too, uh, this week, obviously, they do this bank heist, and Shadow makes it snow. Or does he make it snow? And and uh, Mr. Wednesday kind of presents the idea to so. him of, mm -hmm. do you want to believe that you can do impossible things? Or do you just want to be like, no, it's impossible. I didn't do that. He, thing. He, yeah. he could, Mr. Wednesday could tell him everything he needs to know, but he's he's letting him come to his own conclusions. Yeah. He's like, take your time. Don't rush. Like he always tells him, don't rush. Take your time. He doesn't want to force feed him you good. Know, the truth. Yep. A yep. good mentor, yeah. if you will. Yeah, he's a mentor. Yeah. yeah. So to speak. So to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a pretty dope ass mentor. And, uh, um, yeah, big uh, revelation at the end there. Yeah. Um, I, 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 the spoiler, it's up there. The wife was. Brought to life by a sweet, magical, lucky coin. And burned through <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the casket. The yep. casket mm -hmm. and, and brought her to life. So is she, wh what is she? You you know, but I, I that hey, was awesome. Hey, Poppy. Hey, Poppy. <laughs> hey, Poppy. Uh, <laughs> interesting. This show, again, the way it's shot and how wonderfully it's done yeah. dialogue-wise, we don't know what's going on yet, and I'm totally fine with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally fine with it. All right, let's move on to Fargo. I thought that... Uh, this week's episode was so well done. I love Michael that. Stubarg, I think, is going to get an Oscar nom an Oscar Emmy. an Emmy nomination yes. for the, for Best Supporting Actor because this episode he is incredible. It's yeah, no, I, 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 first thing in the morning there. I'll uh, I'll, uh, I'll call ya. What, yeah. can you. Can you get her now? I like that, the no, 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 yeah, you know, that whole that whole scene actually <laughs> reminded me of the um, Melissa McCarthy, Sean Spicer yeah, sketches, totally. but like in the best way yes, possible. Yes, it, yeah, it was amazing. It was over the cups like, oh, police officers here. Uh, no one asked for that. No yeah. one asked for that. <laughs> <laughs> and the guys in the chair just like yep. staring at him through the window there. Yeah, yeah that's so good. She's, she's, it, it is, it's all obviously in all these Fargo things, it's, we know how they get to the end. They, we know yeah. what the ending is. We just don't know how they get there. Yep. And this is, this has just been so well done and getting there. And you feel terrible for Ray, even though. I know. Because he's just a dumb he's dude. So, yeah. But I liked that in this episode when Ray was pretending to be, what's the brother, Emmett? Emmett. Yeah, mm -hmm. when he was pretending to be Emmett, that he was like, he like really threw down at the bank. Like yeah, that I know. was so good where he's like, great. Well, if you don't want to help me, I guess I'll just have to take my accounts to Chase. Yes. <laughs> That's the only other bank. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 this, the one beautiful thing about this is that Carrie Coon, without saying words, is, is oh. a really great cop. She just is in, in, in both season one and season three. Uh, the female police officers are so well done. Mm -hmm. And in the movie Fargo. Yeah. It, 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 and, and the person that she meets in the courthouse. She's smart too, yeah. Yeah, yeah these, it's just, it's what, yes. what it goes to show you is that it's really, really difficult to be a criminal that can get away with big things like that because you can't cover up your footsteps all the way and cops mm -hmm. are always going to find it because they're smarter than you and they've been doing it longer. Yeah. And what's yeah. up with nothing working for? Like you can't get the automatic faucet to work, the automatic soap won't it's work. It's a carryover from yeah, leftovers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. She has no soul. <laughs> soul is is also, too, I want to give credit to, shout out to David Thules, who's an incredible actor, obviously like from Harry Potter and other great movies. Yeah. But that monologue about the people coming with pitchforks and the 1% of the 1%, like just creepy. I know. He was so creepy in that scene. And you wonder why his teeth were so bad and then all of a sudden we find out he's bulimic. So yeah, it's oh, that's yeah. what it's doing oh, to his teeth. Oh, and like the all the vomiting that happened on this episode, like that made me feel so ill because like I throw up maybe once a year, maybe. Mm -hmm. And so like him, and like I could deal with like the comical vomiting like in Santa Clarita Diet, yeah, but like sure. this real vomiting, I was like, <laughs> no, I'm with you. Gross, <laughs> gross stuff. But Fargo is really killing it this uh, this season so far. I, again, if you guys, if you're not watching Fargo, and you're why are you guys talk about this and you don't and you talk at length about Fargo, it's because it is so well done. Mm -hmm. And and when nominations come out, you'll see uh, what we yeah. what we're talking about. And speaking of performances, and thus we we did it on Daily TV Talk. We missed last week because it was so quick, and she had done it so well. But uh, Allison Keen, the senior TV editor over at Collider.com, uh, is going to drop in here live from Atlanta. Now nah, she's not live, but she's via satellite. <laughs> via satellite, Allison Keen dropping her performer of the week. Allison, take it away. Hi everybody, I'm Collider.com's TV editor, Allison Keen, here with another edition of TV Performer of the Week. Um, just so you guys know, I'm taking into consideration all of last week's episodes with Saturday starting the new week. So if something amazing happens Sunday night, I'll talk about it next time. 
But in the meantime, it's still a really, really difficult choice because there is so much fantastic television on right now. And even though I'm choosing a great show like Better Call Saul, there are still so many amazing actors to choose from just within that show. Now normally I praise Bob Odenkirk for his work on Better Call Saul, but there's also Rhea Seahorn, Jonathan Banks, Giancarlo Esposito is back in the fold. But this week I want to honor Michael McKean as our TV performer of the week for his role as Chuck, Jimmy's despicable brother. Now when you really hate a character on TV, it's usually because there's a really, really great actor who's manipulating you into feeling that way. Jimmy and Chuck are caught up in this battle that for them has been going on for decades and what has made their most recent interaction so difficult is that McKean plays Chuck with this air of righteousness and pomposity. He's a bully and a snob and that may be one of the worst personality combinations. But what's interesting is that he's also extremely vulnerable because he has this mysterious illness and what chicanery, which is a great title of last week's episode, what chicanery maybe probably finally proved is that Chuck's illness is all in his head. But to get to that point, we saw Jimmy have to really tear him down and throw him off his game. And Chuck cracked, went a little crazy during the trial, and then he reeled it back in. But what I was really struck by was a scene a little earlier in the episode where he's practicing what he wants to say about Jimmy. And he chides himself for being too much this or too much that. It's just this really great mixture of his cunning and his humanity. McKean is a really accomplished actor, and he's very, very good at understated comedy. But in Better Call Saul, he takes that to a new level because he plays Chuck completely straight. And Chuck is such an absurd character, even though he's one motivated by something as universal as pride and jealousy. So McKean helps keep him sharp and a formidable foe for Jimmy, even when he's seemingly down and out. So that's why this week I'm choosing Michael McKean as Collider's TV Performer of the Week for Better Call Saul. Makuga, back to you. Allison Keene, she's just the best. If she didn't live in Atlanta, she'd be on the show all the time as well. Uh, but thank you so much for coming in from Atlanta. Atlanta Performer of the Week. I, I, I mean, I love Better Call Saul. And this week, I 100% agree. Michael McKean has been crushing it. That show is so well done. And a lot of people have asked, is Breaking Bad, we, we talked about it last week, is it would Breaking Bad ever, it's just a shame that people kind of were Breaking bad it out, and when Better Call Saul came around, they were like, ah, I don't know if I want to jump on board. You should, because yeah. it's such a such a different, different show with the same look, but just a very, very different show. Thankfully, really MC well done. is a huge supporter of it. It does so well like yeah. with critics and awards, so they're going to keep it going. They're yeah. Like, yeah. All right, before we go on to highs and lows, I uh, just mentioned real quick, Powers Booth passed away this weekend. An incredible actor. Obviously, the first time I really saw him was in um, Tombstone. And he was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And uh, just an incredible actor. You, you guys can check out his credits on IMDb. He's just he's one of those dudes, when he came on screen, he was either a very good villain or a very, very powerful person that you may or may not know as a villain or something like that. A lot of range in that guy had the voice that just commanded presence. So mm -hmm. uh, thoughts and prayers from the TV Talk family going out to Powers Booths, friends and family as well. Let's go into highs and lows. Sinead, let's burn and turn because we got to get some Twitter questions. All right, so Master of None. Uh, what a delightful show. It's so nice to watch a comedy that has such a positive perspective. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm going to sneeze. But uh -huh. Yes, no. You're one hundred percent right, Emma. Yeah. I, I'm watching the first, and I, you know, I love Italy. I live there for a little bit. When he's in that town, and he's uh, <laughs> and he's learning how to make pasta, and he's with that little kid, mm -hmm. and it, it, again, such a charming, wonderful yeah. show. You laugh, you feel it's a heartfelt show. It's yeah. just so well done. I think that's, that's a, it's a heartfelt show. It makes you feel good. Like I'm a big supporter of Louis C.K. I think he's yeah. very talented. Yeah. Aziz is becoming like that kind of a comedy, comedic, Artur filmmaker kind of guy, yeah. but he's happier than Louis. <laughs> Louis is very dark. Yeah. He's really dark. I like that uh, Aziz has a little more fun. 100%. Yeah, definitely yeah. worthwhile. All right, Shane, what's next? Next is the Riverdale finale. Holy smokes. Swear. Punch it. Listen, a word of advice to anybody out there. Your friend falls in the ice. Do not punch with the knuckles. Use oh, the, the like, bob part of the hand yeah. and pound. There's more power in pound. I almost caught myself there. <laughs> There's a lot more. There's a lot more. You can put a lot more physical damage with this part of the fist. Just watch yeah. the movie Bloodsport. But regardless, that Luke Perry. That has to be his moment, though, because remember, he just had a moment with his dad saying, yeah. like, he didn't feel, like, adequate yeah. enough, that everyone was working towards something, and, like, what did, what did he what done? Did he yeah. And I think that was his moment to really, like, show us yeah. to redeem himself. Yeah. And then he had his singing moment. So there's like, so many things you can say, but since we have limited time, 
I'll just jump to this to the end. I find it really interesting. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Yeah, it's up there. It's there. Um, I find it really interesting that Betty has just found out that she has a mysterious, mm -hmm. mysterious brother. Brother. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Long lost hidden brother. And then um, uh, Archie's dad is shot. Do you think it's the long lost brother that shot I Archie's dad? I kind of think it has to be the brother. I think that Hiram the Lodge coming back and being the shooter is so anticlimactic. For sure. I feel like a serpent would be anticlimactic. I feel like anybody in the show right now would be anticlimactic. But Jughead putting that jacket on. Oh, yeah, that was great. Oh, my gosh. I loved everything about it. But yeah. I really think that this brother is going to be a huge part of Agreed. what's coming up. I think they really Absolutely. set up season three or season two of Riverdale really, really well. And you know why they did that, guys? Because they had 13 episodes yeah. of that yep. show. The only thing Super is we hard. didn't see Sabrina Spellman. We haven't. She's coming yeah. next season. She'll I feel it. All right, what's next, Shanae? Gypsy trailers. Yeah, that, this yeah. looks okay. I, to me, it looked a little bit... I Because we, we haven't really gotten... An, like, the sort of genre of erotic thriller has yeah. gone by the wayside, so it could be interesting. Yeah, erotic. remember those old movies you get, like, Sliver yeah. and Basic Instinct? Yeah. Movies I probably shouldn't be watching, but those are good. Yeah. Erotic thrillers. <laughs> those are highs for everybody here at the table. <laughs> Shanae, what's next? The Glow trailer. Just, oh. Hi. Just yes. Thumbs up. So awesome. good. Can't wait. Amazing. Yep. 80s wrestling. Pff, awesome. Hi. Upfront trailers from ABC. Yeah, I watched a bunch of them. I know about you guys probably want to do a lot more stuff in the upfronts, but you don't know a ton. So as the trailers come out and premiere dates, we'll talk more about that. But ABC looks to be doing, giving some uh, some yep. sweet sweet stuff. Yeah. Jeopardy teachers tournament. Yeah, I'm playing that. I'm beating those <laughs> teachers. They may have got me back in school, but I'm playing you now, and I'm doing pretty good. I believe Steven it. Steven Universe. Steven Universe had a Steven bomb last week, so there was an episode every single day. Uh, it's back, whoa. Uh, and uh, it doesn't care about your feelings. It never will. Uh, <laughs> there was great bookends of uh, Steven questioning what his cosmic destiny is and then getting a little more info. There were new gems. It was awesome. Is that Steve. a family friendly show? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. It's for everybody. Yeah, but it's, it but it's, but it's very, oh. but it, it deals with some really like very real emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a great show. Love it. it. Steven Universe. Yep. What's next? Doctor thing? Who. Space is trying to kill you. That's what we got out of Doctor <laughs> Who this week. Uh, yeah. Great episode. Another one of the sort of in the very much in the sort of horror genre. Uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, big revelation at the end, too. Uh, spoilers. Uh, the doctor got blinded in the episode and was like, no worries. When we get back to the TARDIS, I can totally fix my eyes. Just kidding. He's still blind. Oh, no. Fucking Doctor Who. And also, but when you said... <laughs> Uh, space is trying to kill us. We've learned that from every movie of all time. Yep. Here's a little thought, guys. Don't go to space! <laughs> <laughs> next. What's next, Sinead? The Handmaid's Tale. Good uh, question, Emma. Um, so in the book, are all the cars Mercedes-Benz? Like the, the sedans, the SUVs? They don't or specify. I'm pretty oh, okay. sure that's, Just a, curious. that's a I'm like, brand Every uh... car is a Mercedes. Like, Is that the only company that survived? Uh, is well, Mercedes? That's, that's, that's it. it. But that's a nod towards Nazi Germany because oh. Hitler. Oh, uh, yeah. Made, that's where the that's where or the it's company good sponsorship money. <laughs> that's where the company Volkswagen <laughs> comes from. Volk meaning of the earth. earth. Uh, Volkswagen, uh, the car of the earth of the yeah, fatherland, yeah. the Volksfrei. That yep. is what Handmaid's Tale uh, is getting. Uh, Josh teaching some history on TV. Talk. Come on, hey. Look at, good job. You know where I learned all the history? Watching the history yeah. channel. No <laughs> books. Read no, no books. books. Yeah. I ain't reading no books. I don't need none of uh, that. Yeah, but Handmaid's Tale uh, this week. I mean, I. I I continue to just be absolutely enamored of this show. I love it. Uh, we got more backstory on uh, on June at, or Offred and her husband Luke. A uh, little bit about how that whole romance began. Uh, also, spoilers. Uh, this Throw is where there. we introduce the storyline oh. of uh, Serena Joy telling Offred that she should sleep with other people because oh, yeah. her husband yeah. is probably mm -hmm. impotent. Gotta so get pregnant at all we, costs. Yeah. So oh. we start seeing the affair between uh, Nick and Offred this week. Is that the guy that's always like picking stuff out of an, like the, the hood? He's the driver. Yeah. yeah. He's the driver who drives a Mercedes. Who drives a Mercedes also, too, real quick. Um, uh, my female anatomy uh, class knowledge is, is a little weak right now. What happened to Alexis? Is that, is that something that's going to be revealed? Like something's going on with you her? You don't know what happened to her? Well, all I see is they like she, 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 she has it's, a big bandage it's on genital her. genital mutilation. It happens in some cultures that, oh, that don't respect okay. women. Oh, so did. yeah, yeah, oh, they, they basically okay. removed her ability to enjoy having sex. So um, oh, I that. She I liked to have that. sex with women, not men. Okay. Uh, and yeah, and we saw her reclaim some of, like, so basically there's a moment and uh, and we think that she's got all the fight taken out of her, but she doesn't. She steals a car and she runs someone over and it's awesome. Uh, that's and then, Bledel, right? yeah, it, that's Alexis Bledel. Yeah. And then in the end of the episode, uh, we see, uh, Offered uh, reclaim her sexuality a little mm, bit. She and Nick bling. have a really, really 
really good sex scene. Mm, bang, bang, boom. Yeah, yeah what's it's next? real yep. good. Right. Attack on Titan. Oh, man. Uh, another, another cliffhanger ending right, every it's week. It's like the most crazy of cliffhangers. <laughs> what What the hell happened? Basically, look, the spoiler alert, it looks like the Colossal Titan is about to do Cody. a body slam. Just leave it up there. Just, Just leave, leave it up there. there. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the Colossal Titan is about to do a body slam yeah. on Aram, who's got the armored Titan in a chokehold right now. Good uh, fight scene. Yeah, it's good fight scene. And then cut. To yep. be continued. Oh, it's Every week. Yeah. All right, what's New next? New preacher thing? trailer. Yeah. A little that, 30 second. Kind of combined with yeah. but yeah. The, he's coming. The cowboy's coming. coming. Back. Love it. What's next? Um, Law and Order True Crime Trailer. Edie Falco and the Menendez brothers. My my really good buddy uh, was the he was the one of the last two left for them. Uh, he was cast in uh, Menendez brothers. Oh. He's not he's not in it, but he was the last uh, two. I have like, not watched you know they're the, doing uh, a Menendez brothers thing. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I have not watched Law and Order in years. You know, just because it's like you know they, they solved it, but yeah. I know they're going to solve this one. But I want to watch this little mini series. It looks like OJ. Yeah, but with Edie Falco. Yeah. Put Edie Falco in anything. Mm -hmm. All right, the timeless up? fiasco at NBC. <laughs> All right, guys, listen. <laughs> it was canceled. But then, like, they eight went people back tweeted, yeah. and, and <laughs> right. NBC was like, crap, they're tweeting about us. And it was just, like, one person with eight accounts. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Timeless is back. Yeah, well, it's really because the cast themselves learned to actually time travel, so they mm, went back tweet. and they uncanceled it. Yeah, so. that makes sense. Good, makes yeah. sense. <laughs> and what's, what's next, Sinead? Um, Anne with an E. Did I miss yeah, something? Yeah, Anne with an E, Anne of Green Gables. It's like a 90-minute <laughs> premiere about this young girl in Nova Scotia. You know, I thought we were going to the, to the uh, UK, but it's, I'm like, this is Canada. And, I freaking uh, well, that's where Anne of Green Gables is from. Always, I didn't yeah, know. I've never seen the show. Yeah, it was always in Canada. Anne All I know is that those books freaking sucked. Uh, like, they were awful, horrible but books. I, I thought it was going to be kind of like this, like, happy, like, this girl who's, I don't know, but it was all dark. According to John was, Campia, you're either a fan of Anne of Green Gables yeah. or you're not. Because I don't yeah. think it was for me. Yeah. I have friends I who are is, like, is oh John my Campia gosh, Anne of Green fan. Gables. So. <laughs> but it's from, it's from up there in the old Canadian it's province. It's well shot. Like, where they, I, I'm assuming they, they shot on location in yeah. Canada. Yeah. It's beautifully shot. Yeah. 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 Sinead, last one. All right, so PLL. So I'm going to keep it Crush real short. It. So the craziest thing that happened in PLL is that we found, we found out who killed Mrs. De Laurentiis which was her crazy stepsister. Um, not her stepsister, her actual sister, but I like to think of her as a stepsister because real sisters don't kill each other. Also, <laughs> then um, Allison sure. is pregnant right now. She thinks that she's pregnant with um, her crazy ex-husband who they, they killed and the cops don't know that they killed him but he's dead because they killed him she's pregnant with his baby come to find out she's actually not pregnant with his baby she's Ooh. pregnant because a stole emily who is her ex-girlfriend because she did have a lesbian moment nice her mm. eggs when emily had decided to donate eggs like a year before a being the crazy freak that he is stole emily's eggs and planted them into allison so allison is actually pregnant with emily her ex-girlfriend who's also now her best friend's baby Oh. And this entire time, she's thought she's pregnant with her crazy ex-husband. Man, this yeah. pretty That's little drama on that show. <laughs> All right, let's do some live Twitter questions. What do you say, Sinead? Right. Hashtag Clatter TV Talk. <laughs> All right, at Old Skull Five says, "Where is Jean Claude Van jo uh, Johnson?" Van Johnson. It's coming. That's it's a coming, lot of words. It's yeah. coming. Wait, yeah. is, it, is it still happening? You oh, know yeah, what's funny sure. is because I did go on Amazon the other day. Her, her show's out. Yeah, I, I love it. What'd you say? I love Dick. Dick's out. I yeah. saw that. I haven't watched it yet. But you guys <laughs> and you know, know that Mrs. Maisel got two seasons. Yes, I know. Dang, so I, I mean, that part was good. good. If you go on Amazon now, you can watch the Greenlit series. Um, and uh, Jean-Claude Van Johnson's not on it. It just hasn't been released yet. Okay. If it says coming soon, yeah. Maybe. Right. I, was, I was thinking that, but I did get a little nervous. If we they haven't gotten things a that release happening. date yet. Mm -hmm. That I know. It's, it's, it's just, I think it's taken a while to shoot because, listen, Jean-Claude Van Damme, isn't well known as being the easiest to work with. He's a, an extreme diva. Him, really? Steven Seagal, yes, those early action stars from the 80s. They were gods at one they point. They were gods. They were gods. Yeah. And now they are doing pilots on Amazon, <laughs> and it doesn't really fit in their wheelhouse because their trailers are full with like Russian prostitutes and cocaine. Like this one, actually, <laughs> actually, you know, they have to work with a writer with inside of things. It's, it's a little bit different. It's a, it's a come to earth moment. Yeah. All right, what's next? All right, um, Leanne says, thoughts on Rick and Morty alien covenant <laughs> crossover promo. I thought it was funny, um, but clever marketing. Oh, yeah, okay. for oh, sure. Yeah. Because every other alien covenant marketing is like, guess what, guys? They go to space. And guess what? Space is trying to kill you. <laughs> God, that damn was the tagline from the originals. In space, no one can hear you scream. Yeah. yeah. That's a yeah, scary place to be. Yeah, that was the tagline. Yeah. Sound yeah. of the traveling up there. Yep. Stop going there. Monsters are going <laughs> to get you. <laughs>
<laughs> Don't go God. to space, people. I like what they're like, hey, listen, Earth is going to die. We're going to go to this planet we found. It seems like everything's cool. Yeah. I'm like, I'll die here on Earth because I'm going to spend five years in a spaceship, get to this planet. Oh, and it's not that die. bad. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's a monster that not only kills you, but it like turns you into another monster. And then your whole life is ruined because you thought <laughs> that the other planet was fine. It's not fine, people. We have learned. Don't trust robots and don't trust other planets. <laughs> Sinead, what's next? Um, Jimmy said, best orgy only because you haven't seen Sense8. Oh, is there oh, a Oh, yeah, there orgy? is. There's, yeah, there, there's like a couple well, kind of orgies. Well, Sense8 just moved up in, the uh, queue. Sense8, yeah, there was a good one in the Christmas special. Oh. Yeah. What about the Westworld? Yeah. That was a that, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. Game of Thrones True, True Detective ones, Season 2, too. I believe, had one oh, as well. Yeah, Rome, Rome, Rome had an orgy. Oh, yeah. Rome had yeah, an yeah. orgy. A lot of good orgies in Has Game of Thrones had an orgy? They've had sex. There's been a lot of sex. There's been a lot of orgies. Not like groups of people having sex. Well, there's been a couple times when you've gone in the whorehouse and there have been like tons of orgies going on. Yeah, that's true. But never to the extent of. But this this orgy on the <laughs> boat in, in Leftovers was a little off because it wasn't like a bunch of whorehouse models in Game of Thrones. Like, there was some... No, it, was, it wasn't people. a pretty orgy. Yeah, no. it wasn't, yeah. yeah. Let's be honest, people. I, I would want to go to that one. In this world, if there is an orgy that you've been invited to, more than likely, unless it's at, like, a porn awards, it's not going to be all really good-looking people. I'm no. just throwing that out there. <laughs> just in case you get an invite Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> your friend's like, hey, I'm going to this orgy party this weekend. You should come along. Don't get your hopes up that it's, like, yeah. 70 Jessica Chastain. Things, right. okay? <laughs> and, and even at like the porn awards, yes. still not going to be cool. that good looking. Yeah. Right. Yes. True. Um, Henry says, hi, TV Talk. Hi. How, come, how come CBS hasn't canceled Survivor yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, why? It's a it's just gold. Yeah. It's pretty still easy money. for Prince them money. to make. Uh, it doesn't cost them that much oh. to make, and it makes them a lot of money. That's people yes. that watch Survivor, it's sort of like people that are still watching Grey's Anatomy. There is that die-hard group of fandom yeah. that 20 seasons later is just like, this show is so good. It's amazing. Can you imagine what happened to this guy in season 13? He comes back in season 17. Yeah. It's it. It's Amazing sort of like race. The Bachelor. Yeah. They, the have it down, they have it down to such a formula. Like, I did background on Grey's Anatomy one time, and yeah. literally they, like, shot it in a morning. Yes. Like, we were done, done by, like, four in the afternoon. You're done. <laughs> they got it. Sinead, what's next? Brian says, with mixed reviews of the Gifted trailer, do you think it will affect the mm. views of the show itself? So it does look like a lot of people, you guys, aren't too stoked on this. I know it just dropped today. It's, yeah, but it's I not just, a great trailer. As far as trailers yeah, go. I think no. it's just a bad trailer. I, as I say, I don't know anything about the know. show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be teen angsty? Is it going to be more like CW-ish? Is it going to be closer to kind of like what we saw from Legion? Is it going to be closer to... I mean, we're not going to get the amount of violence in Netflix. It's just a very not like... This is what this show is. Trailer. Well, especially when you see the, the the poor kid getting picked on in the in the showers, it's yeah. like we just watched Thirteen Reasons Why, which was done so well. Granted, oh, it's a much yeah. different show. They didn't have superpowers, but you just kind of remember that, and it's like, is this going to be as good as that in terms of the acting and performances right. by the uh, the young kids? Agreed. Yeah. Right, let's do two more, Shane. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Elijah Elijah M. Turner says, if you were on the Berlanti team, what would be your pitch for the next DC show? Mm, do you guys I'm, want any more DC shows? I would watch a Batgirl show. Batgirl would, would be sweet. I would, yes, I would want a female-led show that isn't Supergirl. I yeah. would love a Batgirl. I would love look at young Bruce Wayne, not yeah. Gotham. Not, uh, not I Gotham. mean, I, no offense. Because for to me, Gotham. like, no I feel like with the current iteration of Batgirl, the Babs Tar Batgirl, like, it's about her moving to sort of like the the like Los Feliz or Silver Lake of Gotham mm. and being an adult <laughs> and yeah I I feel like I feel like that would that would feel fit in yeah. well in mm. the Berlanti kind of universe yeah. and I would totally watch that I would love to see a Green Lantern television series yeah oh yeah there was talk that people thought that Diggle might become Green Lantern mm -hmm. you know but that never happened but Green Lantern would be a good one no, too. I'd love it yeah. it could be John yeah who me. No, David, you didn't say anything. Why well, is it the Green Lantern? Oh, you Green did. You're with me. I'm Green with you. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, cool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Green Lantern. Sinead, one more. Luis E. De La Pena says, what's the longest you've ever binge watched? I saw a whole season of Game of Thrones in one day. It's pretty good. Ten hours? Mm. That's, yeah. That's, that's a good that's binge. Good. That's yeah, a lot that's of binge. Good. I did, uh, when I was binging Supernatural seasons one through six, I locked myself. I had like a pizza in dark room for <laughs> probably most of the day. Didn't see the sun at all. That was... Not good. Mm. No. I mean, felt like what a drug addict must feel. Iron like. Fist <laughs> felt like what f seven, eight, twenty-four years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 it was. I was horrified fair. to find out that only like three hours had passed. See, now that I'm older, like have a little bit better understanding of like binging. Like I can pace myself. Yes. I'll watch a few, take a break, go outside, go to do something, run in there, yeah. get some food, come right. back, watch some more. Like I don't just sit there for like eight hours. I was like this. The whole I time. was really yeah. sick uh, like a few months ago, and it was like the stomach stuff, so you couldn't really like leave your bed. That's a good binge when you're mm -hmm. sick. Yeah. And I watched twenty, like twenty-two episodes of the hundred. 
and I was like rolling in my bed. Like, oh, my jeez. My back was starting to hurt. Like I was yeah. moving all around, but I couldn't really go anywhere. Bed sores. Yeah. Uh, it was a mm-hmm. nightmare. But I, I will say that I think that that was the wrong show to binge because now I don't want to watch The 100 anymore. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I watched too. Making a Murderer like beginning oh, to yeah. end. Yeah. Every, it's like, a I think dark it was, took me like two and a half days, yeah. but. That was I, a long binge. I definitely binged. I, I went on a serious binge with 13 Reasons Why because I was recent because I was ill the weekend that that yeah. came out. And so I just like laid in bed and watched all of 13 Reasons Why. Uh, Being sick is a good way. You don't feel as guilty about the binge. Yeah, Have you ever binge so hard, though, that when you watch like eight to ten hours of something, like that's all your mind can process. When you actually do meet somebody else or have to interact with somebody else, it's weird. all you think oh, it's about horrible. is that show. No. It's horrible. Talk. After Iron Fist, literally after Iron Fist, um, I was... Tr- about to put Harrison to bed yeah. and my mom's Austin. like oh. my mom's like did you give him dinner and I literally was like <laughs> I staring at her and she's like did you give him dinner <laughs> and I was like what are you talking about it's 8 30 of course I gave him dinner mom she's like I don't think you've given your child dinner yet <laughs> and I had to sit there and it literally took me like 45 seconds to figure out in my head if I had fed him <laughs> because I was so Poor like Harrison. so stupid after watching that much television yeah. like it's yeah. not it's not good for you no, no definitely not no, yeah. I, I remember in, in college my junior fall when I went in this like I never wanted to leave the apartment I never went to class I was watching like four to five to six episodes of Sopranos a day and I remember I came outside and I hadn't left the apartment in 48 hours and my brother was like let's go get dinner and I walked out and he kind of looked at me he's like are you okay it's like everything's moving so fast <laughs> <laughs> real life it's faster than 24 real frames life. a second yeah. Yeah. oh that's amazing oh man okay that was uh twitter questions thank you guys for cool. watching and hashtag cloud or tv talk we love you guys great questions as always let's do before we get out of here let's do it on we want to do a little drumming we're hitting the microphones it's not great for the audio podcast but who cares <laughs> pick up the way yeah and it's my pick of the week, and my pick of the week is Freaks and Geeks. Uh, we talked about it a little bit uh, last week. It is possibly the greatest teen drama slash comedy of all time from yep. Paul Feig and Judd Apatow. Uh, it takes place in a suburb of Detroit in the 1980s, and it is about a, an overachiever, uh, Lindsay, basically trying to get in with Linda this Cardellini. Crew. Yeah, d- Linda Cardellini. Oh. And it's a crazy, oh, crazy man. cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Linda Cardellini, John Francis Daly, Seth Rogen, James Franco, Busy Phillips, Jason Siegel, Martin Starr, our friend Sam Levine. Yes. Uh, it, it's, it's Who a, I saw at Billy Joel on Saturday. Yes, yes. amazing. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an incredible cast. Uh, it was ahead of its time. I think 18 uh, episodes. it was canceled after 18 episodes uh, NBC actually originally only aired the first 12 and did not air those last five mm-hmm. later on that happened on I believe Fox family uh, but it was very much ahead of its time in terms of its portrayal of like a very like real look at teenage life mm-hmm. you know what I mean as opposed to making it glamorous like the this show was it's weird it's funny it's poignant uh, Lindsay is my spirit animal because I was also a crazy overachiever in high school uh, this there is, is somebody the one beautiful thing about Freaks and Geeks that I love is that you can assume, what, every person in this country or that was in America whatever even if you're outside of it you can associate with one of these people Absolutely. oh yeah you know 100% I mean? you 100% can and uh, it's it was so well done led into Undeclared which I think is is a pretty actually pretty decent series yeah. It's no freaks and geeks. Yeah, that's for sure. But whenever you never seen freaks and geeks, oh Oh, my god, you gotta watch it. Yeah, and that's the thing is, it's on Netflix, you guys, and they'll like never take it off because it does so well. Yeah, it's so good. I mean, it's on every list of. It's like at the top of every canceled too soon list, and even Mm. being canceled too soon. This is the canceled too soon show, and and even only being eighteen episodes long, it has gotten crazy accolades of like being one of the best dramas of all time. I know. And. Lindsay wears a journey shirt in like seven of the 12 episodes. <laughs> yeah, it's so really, it's honestly like mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. And maybe it's only mind blowing because we yeah. think about it All nowadays because I'm Echo. just like, a show like this would 100% work. Yes. Oh, 2017, yeah. and I, I fa- it, felt like this oh. show was Yeah, perfect. if this right show now. was made today, it would be you many, many it. seasons long. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's a great series. So, so everyone well should watch it. All right, that'll do it for us. We went a little long here on Clatter TV Talk for you guys today, but that's because we had so much news and so much TV to talk about. (laughs) We will be back next Monday. Uh, A little heads up, though. We will be dark on Memorial Day uh, here in America. If you guys are international, we take that holiday off. So we won't be here. We won't do a pre-tape. There will just be no TV talk that week. We will come back the week later. So we'll have some finales on the CW to talk about. There will be a lot to talk about over a two-week period. So look for that. But again, we'll be here next week. Uh, on the 22nd, I believe, and then, or 21st, yep. 21st? No, it's 22nd. 22nd, right. yeah. 22nd, and then we're gone uh, Memorial Day, but then we'll be back in June to break it all down, Collider TV Talk Ooh. style. Before we get the hell out of here, Sinead DeFreeze, where can the good people find you? I'm online at That So she, I mean, 
what is wrong with me? I've been doing that. I've been doing that constantly lately. I'm online at Sinead DeFries. Sneed DeFries. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. Um, and at that, so Sinead.com. It's really Man. bad. I can't remember my own damn site. I feel like we should cut and let her do that again. Yeah. Cody, do we cut? And back. Uh, I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at <laughs> that's Oceanade.com. Boom. David Griffin. Uh, thanks, everybody, for the birthday wishes last week. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you can find me at Griffin D on Twitter and Instagram. Did I not wish you a happy nope, birthday? Nope, I didn't get any wishes. For, no, I didn't tell you, though. That's not your fault. Oh, he to- You told me, like, the day yeah, that's after okay. yeah. something. I got more <laughs> birthday wishes from the fans to my own <laughs> TV Talk crew. No, that's not fair. You didn't tell anybody. I, I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> he literally, just, I'm, I'm messing. I didn't he tell literally didn't tell it, but I, I don't think anybody. you guys were here because not I was talking I to him on Friday, uh, and I, he was like, I was like, when was your birthday? And he was like, Wednesday. And I was like, damn it, D. Griff, like, why don't you say things? Yeah. Right. Sorry, that's my, it's my fault. And then yeah. we talked that's about how he was like, oh, I just wanted to chill. And I'm like, I knew you'd I'm be sorry upset. about that, Josh. I apologize. What? I know. I know. I could have gotten you a gift. Taking you out to lunch. Oh, maybe, maybe that's why Mark Ellis's email chain to us about Comic Con was like, and then we'll get to planning uh, David's belated birthday barbecue trip. It all makes sense Come on. now. <laughs> And anyway. Emma Fife, where can the good people find you on there? You can Josh find like me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at my name, Emma Fife. Also, if you want to hang out with me for a good long while tomorrow and play Persona 5, you can do so over at twitch.tv slash hyperrpg starting at 1 o'clock p.m. for my show over there, which is called Adventures in Fiefdom. That's a really good. That's I know. Really good. Did, good you, did you take that to visit from I did, I did. That's inspired by Josh McCuga. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> My 1% check will be in the mail, I assure you. Uh, I guess my name's at Josh McCuga. The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. David's actually been on the show. It's an amazing episode. Didn't tell me his birthday was then either. <laughs> What's one of your questions? We did talk about my most memorable sex, but yeah, not about my birthday. That's really just... Yeah, I'm sorry. As your friend and co-host on the show for sorry. over a year now, sorry. you don't tell me when your birthday oh. is. I'm sorry if I don't check Facebook in order to realize <laughs> that it is your birthday. Yeah, and I feel terrible about it that I didn't get to wish you a happy birthday. We'll take you out. We'll maybe go play a beer nine of golf. Ooh. Ah, damn it, David Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Guys, you know what? Burn all your books, okay? <laughs> no, no! David Griffin didn't tell me that it was his birthday. <laughs> don't just put down the book. You burn them. <laughs> And then you pick up the remote. Love you guys. We'll see you next time. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.